हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू मेरीन इंजीनियरिंग ट्यूटोरियल्स आई एम अतुल कुमार गुप्ता एंड बैक विद ए न्यू ट्यूटोरियल प्रेजेंटली वी आर स्टडिंग मरीन ऑर्गेनिक सिस्टम एंड टैक मशीनरी टुडे वी हैव सेकंड लेक्चर एंड द टॉपिक्स आर इफेक्ट ऑफ एनपीएसएच वेपर प्रेशर एंड विस्कोसिटी in pumping operations first of all we will discuss about the importance of npsh in a pumping system then we will discuss about the effects of vapor pressure in pumping operations next we will see the effect of viscosity in a pumping operation then we will learn about the selection of pumps for various ships services lastly we will discuss about the pumping operations which require special permissions following slides will cover these topics importance of npsh in pumping operations what is npsh npsh or net positive suction head is defined as the sum of static and dynamic head minus vapor pressure head sum of static and dynamic head is called as technician head mathematically npsh is equal to pi by rho g plus v i square by 2g minus p v by rho g where p i is the absolute pressure at inlet v i is the average velocity at inlet rho is the density of liquid g is acceleration due to gravity and p v the vapor pressure of the liquid what is its effect in pumping operation NPSH is an important parameter for proper functioning of the pump as the liquid flows to the pump due to this head type of NPSH net positive suction head can be divided in two types namely NPSH A which means net positive suction head available and npsh r which means net positive suction head required for a pump to operate satisfactorily net positive suction head available should always be in excess of net positive suction head required otherwise the pump will cavitate net positive suction head required depends on the pump design whereas net positive suction head available depends on the pump installation thus it becomes this responsibility of installation engineer to ensure that net positive suction head available remains more than net positive suction head required in all pumping conditions it becomes more critical to design the system when the pump takes suction from a level below it if the liquid is volatile in nature with high vapor pressure a vacuum pump may additionally be required with centrifugal pump which is unable to handle the vapors usually the head is provided by the atmospheric pressure acting on the surface of liquid theoretically this head is equal to 760 mm of mercury or 10.336 m of water how to maintain higher net positive suction head available as discussed in lecture number 1 some of the head is lost due to major and minor losses 
on the suction side. In order to reduce these losses or to increase the net positive suction head available, pumps should be placed closer to the liquid in order to reduce the suction pipe length. Suction pipe or pump is usually larger in diameter than delivery pipe to reduce the head loss. Straight pipes with minimum of fittings such as walls, bends, tees, filters, etc. should be considered. A gate or butterfly wall should be used which offers minimum resistance with full flow practice sticks. What is vapor pressure? Vapor pressure is defined as the pressure exerted by vapors when they are in equilibrium with the liquid phase at a given temperature. How it is created? When a liquid is heated, it begins to boil and the vapors produce exert pressure on the surface of the liquid. Factors on which vapor pressure depends. Vapor pressure depends on the nature of liquid and its temperature. Volatile liquids with flash point below 60 degrees centigrade give off more vapors and have high vapor pressure. In comparison with non volatile liquids having flash point above 60 degree centigrade and low vapor pressure. Vapor pressure of a liquid increases with increase in temperature due to increase in the kinetic energy of molecules. Effect of vapor pressure on suction lift or pump. Increase in vapor pressure lowers the suction lift of the pump. Although water has low vapor pressure, but it increases with rise in its temperature and can affect its pumping adversely as shown in the next slide. This table shows the rise in vapor pressure for water with increase in its temperature and corresponding drop in the pump suction lift provided by atmospheric pressure. Theoretically, suction lift of the pump is 760 mm of mercury or 10.336 meter of water. At 25 degree centigrade, vapor pressure is 3.157 kilopascal and the practical lift is 7.5 meters. At 64 degree centigrade, vapor pressure is 23.162 kilopascal and practical lift is reduced to 3 meters. If water temperature rises to 77 degree centigrade, vapor pressure becomes 40.77 kilopascal and the practical lift is reduced to 2.1 meter. When water temperature rises to 94 degree centigrade, vapor pressure becomes 80.43 kilopascal and the pump cannot draw water on its own. At 110 degree centigrade, Vapor pressure is 144.25 kilopascal. The pump now needs a head of 3 meter to draw the water. Similarly, when water temperature is 123 degree centigrade, vapor pressure becomes 223.95 kilopascal and the pump requires a head of 6.7 meter to draw the water. Effect of viscosity in pumping operation. What is viscosity? 
As discussed earlier, viscosity is defined as the force of friction induced between adjacent layers of liquid in motion and it plays a vital role in pumping operations. Viscous force is proportional to velocity gradient that is delta V by delta Z. We know that velocity of liquid in center of the pipe is maximum and zero adjacent to the pipe wall. Viscous force is also proportional to surface area. Surface area of the innermost layer is minimum which gradually increases towards the inner periphery of the pipe wall. Combining both of these above, we get viscous force F is equal to minus mu into A into dV by dz, where mu is the coefficient of viscosity. Variation of viscosities among different liquids. Viscosity of liquids vary widely, that is, water has low viscosity of 1 CST at 20 degree centigrade, whereas heavy fuel oil is highly viscous, having viscosity of 700 CST at 50 degree centigrade. Relationship between viscosity and temperature. Viscosity of liquids vary inversely with rise in their temperature. Thus, heavy fuel oil on ships is required to be heated to 140 degree centigrade corresponding to their viscosity of 15 CST to enable their injection in the engine cylinder. Range of viscosity in pumping operation. Selection of pump is mainly based on head and flow requirement of the liquids. Although viscosity of liquid is yet another important parameter for pump selection. Centrifugal pumps are used for high discharge rate at low to moderate heads. They are used for low viscosity range between 0.1 to 200 CST. A centrifugal pump can't handle high viscosity liquids. They are unable to create high vacuum at the suction I in comparison to positive displacement pumps. While handling viscous fluids, load on the prime mover of centrifugal pump increases due to excessive shear force between the layers of fluid and flow rate is greatly reduced. A heavy impeller is also required to withstand additional force. Positive displacement pumps can handle fluids with high viscosity from 2 to 400,000 CST. Transporting pumps are used for low discharge rate at high head and the reason for the low discharge rate is their low speed due to respiratory motion. Gear or screw pumps are suitable for medium flow rate at high head and can handle high viscosity liquids. As these are rotary machines, they can be operated from medium to high speeds. In positive displacement pumps, flow rate varies directly at the speed. Head develop is independent of the flow rate or speed. With high viscosity fluids, flow rate actually increases in all types of pumps due to reduction in the internal leakage which is also called the slip. High viscosity of the liquid also reduces cavitation related problems. 
selection of pumps for ships services transporting pumps transporting pumps are used for handling bilge water or sometimes used as emergency fire pump plunger pump plunger pumps are used for injecting fuel in engine cylinders testing fuel injectors hydrostatic testing or hydraulic pumps for various purposes gear screw and low pump gear screw and low pump are used for handling viscous liquid such as fuel oil lubricating oil and sludge etc vein pump and variable delivery pump vein pumps were earlier used for hydraulic applications such as winch windlass deck cranes valve actuation steering gear frame system etc which have now been replaced by axial displacement variable delivery pumps centrifugal pump centrifugal pumps are used for handling low viscosity fluids such as fresh water sea water they are also used as submerged lubricant pump for main engine pumping operations requiring permissions most of the pumping operations can be carried out routinely without any specific permission which may include circulation of cooling water lubrication and fuel system routine internal transfer of lube and fuel oil and bilge fresh water and boiler feed water system etc operation of hydraulic system for operation of winch windlass deck cranes or frame pump however certain pumping operations require specific permission from the responsible department in charge which can affect the stability of ship or can result in marine pollution these operations are listed below and their impact on the ship and environment are discussed here first is pumping operations affecting ship stability ballasting or deballasting chief officer is the officer in charge responsible for ship stability ballasting or deballasting operations are carried out for maintaining the stability of the ship these operations should never be carried out without the instructions of chief officer who monitors the operations from commencement to its completion bunkering bunkering and its preparation can also affect ship stability thus any quantity of oil to be transferred for bunker tank preparation initial and final quantities of oil remaining in the tanks should be conveyed to chief officer for calculating and establishing ship stability discharge of large mass of water before transfer of any large mass or discharge of water consent of chief officer should be taken second is pumping operations which may cause pollution discharge of bilge water discharge of bilge water needs permission from chief engineer to prevent the violation of marco oil transfer oil transfer is considered to be a critical operation on board and can result in oil pollution before bunkering operation deck covers are sealed and extra precautions are taken to prevent any outflow of oil into the sea 
discharge of sewage. Discharge of sewage also requires control to prevent violation of marpol. Discharge of used maintenance chemicals. Similarly, used maintenance chemicals and boiler washings cannot be discharged overboard and need to be disposed of properly to prevent violation of marpol. This completes the study of the effects of NPSH, vapor pressure and viscosity on pumping operations, selection of pumps for various ship services and the pumping operations which require special permissions. This book is written by me and covers all the topics as per syllabus specified by Indian Maritime University. It clarifies the concepts with simple illustrations. This book also provides answers to all the questions which have appeared in the examination conducted by Indian Maritime University. This book can help the students in preparing for the exam and also to work on ships auxiliary systems and deck machinery safely. Hope you have liked the lecture. You can write your feedback in the comment box. If you have liked the tutorial, you may share it with your friends. You may subscribe to the channel for getting notification about the new tutorials. I will be back with a new lecture shortly. Thanks for watching till the end.